This is a true pre-title sequence. I'm with experts from, what's the name of your agency? McCann London. McCann London, one of the best advertising agencies in the world. This is an advert I designed myself. Is it perfect or could it improve? There's a few things you could you could do to what? make it a bit better. What? A picture would do. Picture. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit of design work. It's quite basic. It's not even a PowerPoint. Mm. You've tried hard. What's the benchmark of good adverts? I'd go less, again. Less is more. Mind. There's hardly anything. <laughs> <laughs> How could there be less? <laughs> Hello, I'm Russell and this is The Truce, but that's just one of my jobs. I'm also a stand-up comedian touring all these places. For tickets, go to russellbrand.com. Russell, you can't have two jobs. Why not? If I was a Member of Parliament, I could have five. Headline news, he used to be as Chancellor, but he's gone a step further now, taking a job where he'll be writing the headlines himself. It does seem weird that George Osborne, who we can all still remember as being like the Chancellor, now while still an MP, is editor of the Evening Standard. What does this tell us about modern politics? Urgent question, Mr Andrew Gwynne. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To ask the Prime Minister if she will make a statement on the operation of the Advisory Committee on Business Appointments and the Ministerial Code. Oh, Christ, mate, that was a boring sentence, wasn't it? Tony Blair's endorsed Osborne's appointment, saying that he's a highly capable guy whose entry into journalism would make politics more interesting. And I suppose that just shows you how uh, normalised it's become. He's got five jobs. One is where he earns 650 grand a year working for a financial giant, BlackRock. He gets loads of money for his speeches. Just from 14 speeches, he got 786 grand. They're very bloody good speeches for that. In light of the appointment of the Right Honourable Member for Tatton to the edit editorship of the London Evening Standard. Common rules don't restrict MPs from taking outside work. Well, I suppose that's why a lot of them do it, because there are no rules or regulations around it. Last year, a study from Transparency International found that MPs were being paid millions of pounds for outside jobs. 73 MPs received 3.4 million in the previous 12 months, making it up to 13 times their annual pay. So I suppose what this reveals is how standardised it is. But the complication comes, I suppose, is that members of parliament, let's not forget, are meant to be making decisions that relate to our national life. Do you remember in 2015 it emerged that 70 MPs had proven links to private health care providers. All of them, 70 MPs, voted in favour of the Health and Social Care Act which uh, was a huge step towards the privatisation of the NHS. So you can see a palpable, tangible, political and power based relationship between these jobs that they're taking, the money they're getting, and like the NHS, one of the treasured icons of British cultural life. Then of course the other aspect of this is the jobs that they go on to do after they're in power. Now think for a moment of the people that are in the cabinet, people that are ruling MPs now. What bills are they passing? What decisions are they making? What will they go on to do? But yes, there'll be the, there's the continued dismantling of the NHS, there's the continued privileging of the financial sector. You'll see when they leave those jobs, which they will, because they're all kind of young enough, that they'll take up positions in those areas. And I suppose What's personally disheartening is the way that you just kind of think, well, yeah, that's normal. The idea that parliamentary democracy relates in an authentic way to the governing of our life, the organising of our society and the benefit of, in this case, the British people, is abstract now. We no longer have an expectation around it. So George Osborne can come standard, evening standard editor and just go, well, yeah, it's not surprising. It's not a problem. It's merely the making explicit of something we all fully understand already. George Osborne. Well, Mr. Speaker, um, when I heard that this uh, urgent question had been granted, I thought it was important uh, to be here, although unfortunately we have missed the deadline for the evening standard. <laughs> In my view. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha ha ha, George, how funny it is to be so far up in the helium world of excess, wonder and privilege that you literally joke about it while you're in Parliament. It's not even considered a serious thing. I mean, what some people tell you is that what happens at this level is all such a meaningless spectacle that everything, like that his important roles are then things that he gets paid 600 grand a year for. These are his important jobs. This is just like a hobby. It's like a club. It looks like the clubs they belong to, I bet. All nice green leather chairs, wooden stuff everywhere. They're not doing anything of any significance there other than facilitating their interests in other areas. In my view, Mr Speaker, in my view, this Parliament is enhanced when we have people of different experience take part 
in our robust debate. That's handy, isn't it, in your view? And that's what I'll be writing in the Evening Standard. Parliament enhanced by me! And when people who have held senior ministerial office continue to contribute to the decisions we have to make. Continue to contribute? What was the bit when you used contribute before? That bit where I was fucking over the NHS? Oh, thanks. But I will listen to what my colleagues have to say in this debate, I'm interested to hear. If he sort of turned into oil at some point while speaking, I'd go, yeah, I knew he was a shapeshifter. George Osborne was addressing staff at the Evening Standard this afternoon, but can he really combine the role of editor while remaining MP for Tatton? Yes, he can do what the bloody hell he likes. I think that's become quite clear over the course of this short news broadcast. He insisted to ITV News he could. Well. There are plenty of examples of MPs who have edited newspapers and magazines over the years. It must be so hard for him not to just go, look, I don't fucking care. Say what you want. Fuck you. How about this? I can run the Evening Standard and I can stand wanking in my office while my staff take down notes. What are you going to do about it? Nothing, I suppose. That's right. Now, fuck off. And I'm going to continue to play a big part in British public life, and I'm looking forward to it. Oh, great. Thanks. That's reassuring. What's next? You're going to crush our skulls with your elbows while also running a lemonade stand. The austerity chancellor, whose tactics many blamed for the Brexit vote, may see it as the perfect platform for his views. A platform for my views. Have one. Have five. Have a million quid. Thank you. But what do the voters in his Cheshire constituency think? I'm not happy about that, not happy at all. He should be doing his job. Maybe he's more interested in the money that he can earn and other commitments rather than his, yeah, his dedication to the community. And I've lived here 16 years and I've not noticed him around particularly doing very much. <laughs> that lady, like, making a genuine attempt to have some real uh, understanding of, right, it's George Osborne, right, God, how are we going to make Tatton better? Uh, I don't give a fuck, I don't care. But for the moment, he sees no conflict between his roles. Libby Vina, ITV News, Westminster. Owen Jones writes brilliantly, as you can rely on him to, on this matter. He says simply, is politics a service or a duty, or is it a launch pad for lucrative jobs in the private sector? Well, it's a question that we're seeing answered again and again and again, really plainly and clearly. Read all of Owen's article on The Guardian, of course. Uh, I like this observation that he makes. Britain is ruled by a never-ending di dinner party marked by limitless self-regard and contempt for those who don't have a seat at the table. That's politics today. That's the world of privilege that that we live in that is some true news if you've got any expectations of your members of parliament although you know we all know that sort of like it's not that long ago that joe cox was murdered that you see I, like flashes of idealism within this system but we know that the system doesn't allow those kind of ideals to have any traction or make any realistic change you know that I know that, George Osborne knows that, which is why he's standing in Parliament right now guffawing at his own joke before editing his own newspaper. Welcome to Britain everyone, enjoy the ride. Subscribe here, come see this tour, you're in need of a laugh, let me tell ya. Nose is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trolls is like the nose. If the nose was true, I want some trolls. Let's have some trolls.